Irritable Foul Syndrome Theatre presents the first in a series of episodes called Tales from the Octopus Macabre. Creep and Buzzard both had long stringy hair down to their waist. Stood each one of them about five foot two with their stocky feet. Each one of them had size 14 and a half feet with seven toes in each foot and were both of them musically attenuated. Creep played the xylophone and Buzzard played the trombone. They were both in their late 60s and still each one of them was living with their parents as they did. One of them owned for a, pet, a pig they fed pizzas and clam fritters, while the other one owned a pig pug noses. He had one from Antigamous Freebird McCarthy in a card game at Waldo's Tavern. They were both told by their mothers about two weeks previous, like, that they had three weeks to pack up their golf clubs and um, Betsy Smith and Lady Day albums and move out. You contribute nothing to this house, Creep's mother told them, and you eat everything I buy at Bella's Grocery. Both of them being immune to any kind of actual employment, they decided to start robbing banks. Since they were both highly allergic to any and all forms of violence, they decided to rob the banks with beehives. Lord and Lady were dining out at Lefty Calhoun's Chinese restaurant one evening. It was their anniversary, and Creeper Buzzard was sitting one table over from them. When the waiter, after dinner was long over, approached Creeper Buzzard with the bill for the meal they ate, Creep looked at him in a very confused manner. What's this? he asked the waiter. Lord looked over at the table where Creep and Buzzard were both seated, the lower halves of their faces smeared with tomato paste. They had never seen either Creep or Buzzard anywhere in town before, due to the fact that each one of them spent the days either playing music or watching the jewelry channel. That was the only station that Mother would allow them to watch. Have you ever been to a restaurant before, Lord asked Creep? Is that what they call this place, replied Buzzard. Do you have money enough to pay for the bill, Lady asked the two of them. Wait a minute, said Buzzard. Pushing, fishing around in his trouser pockets. Finally, he pulled a Monopoly game cube-like motel out. The waiter asked him what, what he was supposed to do with a piece of, from a game of Monopoly. Lord, beginning to realize the mist of the situation, decided to pay Creeper Buzzard's bill. They had nowhere to spend the night, so they decided to go to Zazu Baramusa's coffee shop and ask her if they could live with her for a while. Creep had asked her out four times already. He thought they might make a good item, him being the homeliest looking man in town, her being the most beautiful woman in town. Meanwhile, Antigamous Freebird McCarthy had built out of eggs, milk, and breadcrumbs a time traveling mechanism that could go 500 years into either the past or the future. He asked the homophobic Hartford, Connecticut hog farming hopsichordist if he wanted to pay a visit to the Scarlet Lettered Squire from South Cincinnati. It was the Scarlet Lettered Squire from South Cincinnati who gave Creep and Buzzard the idea of stealing all the winter clothes from everyone's bedroom bureau drawers and replacing them with briefs and tank t- top t-shirts a few days before engaging in their first beehive enamored bank robbery. The homophobic Hartford, Connecticut hog farming hopsichordus was standing in the middle of Main Street one day, arguing with the illustrious attorney Ernie McCurdy, who highly suspected the homophobic Hartford, Connecticut hog farming hopsichordus of stealing his taxidermy and selling it in New Jersey to the Bunscotch Leviathan, who had just got back from Missouri Jake's farm where he bought a turkey-feathered coat of pink mink and f- frilled flatter the bachelorette's uncuff-linkable un- cuff- sleeves that uh, Missouri Jake told him would keep him afloat in case of shipwrecks along the Bering Straits. And that pauses our um, first episode in the series, uh, Tales from the Vaults of the Octopus Bacab.